Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Inna mathala Isa inda Allahi ka mathali Adam. Khalaqahu min turabin thumma qala lahu kun fayakun. Certainly the example of Jesus to Allah is like the example of Adam. Allah created Adam from soil and then said to him, be, and he was. It means that Allah Ta'ala created Jesus without a father, like he created Adam without a father and without a mother. And like he created Hawa also without a father and without a mother. As we mentioned before, Eve, the wife of Adam, has no father and has no mother because Adam is not her father. Adam is her husband, alayhi salatu wassalam. And she was created from a man. Adam's creation is, in the human being's mind, more amazing than Jesus' creation because Adam was created from soil, as a grown man with knowledge, without a father or a mother. And even Eve's creation in the human being's conception is greater than the creation of Jesus, alayhi salatu wassalam, because she also was created without a father or a mother as a grown woman, and she was created from a man, not from a woman. Jesus, alayhi salatu wassalam, his creation was an amazing creation. He was created from a mother without a father. And all of what we just said now about the creation of Adam and Eve being in the human's conception greater than the creation of Jesus is not to take away from Prophet Isa in any way. Rather, it is to take away from the argument of the Christians. Because the Christians said that Jesus was born without a father. So he must be the son of God. And some of them said, so he's God. And that's definitely blasphemy. But they did not apply this same reasoning to Adam or to Eve. Although their creation is even more amazing in the human's conception than the creation of Jesus. Alayhi salatu wassalam. Subhanallah. If there's one thing that astonishes me, it's a logical Christian. And I mean by that, he's a Christian who uses his logic strongly in everything until it comes to religion. And once it comes to religion, all of his logic is out the door. So then he says Jesus is God and Jesus is the son of God. And he believes in a book that he knows has been changed and perverted. Allah guides whomever he wills. When Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wassalam reached 30 years old, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala gave him the revelation and made him a prophet and commanded him to go out to the people and call them to the worship of Allah. And Isa alayhi salatu wassalam, he was called Al-Masih. The Christians call him the Messiah. They say it means the anointed one. And to be honest, I'm not sure what are they talking about. I know they said something about Jesus being rubbed with olive oil or something like that. I'm not really sure. But the scholars of Islam said that Isa was called Al-Masih either because he did lots of siyaha, that means traveling, going around, touring. He used to go to different places and different locations, calling people to Islam and making da'wah. Or he was called Al-Masih because of his Masih, which is wiping. You know, like Masih, al al wiping on the khufs, Al-Masih. So some said he's called Al-Masih because he would wipe on the sick people and they would be cured. Alayhi salatu wassalam. Allah revealed a heavenly book to him, which was the Injil. 
In this Injil, there was the correct belief in Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, and that Isa was the slave of Allah and his messenger. And that reminds me of something that I had been meaning to mention previously. Since we told the story of Prophet Sulaiman with Bilqis, there was something I meant to mention to you. Didn't Bilqis embrace Islam with Prophet Sulaiman, as is mentioned in the Quran? She said, Aslam tu ma'a Sulaiman li Rabbi al I embrace Islam with Solomon for the sake of the Lord of the worlds. It means she took her shahada. So all the people who had to believe in a prophet, whoever he might have been, they always had to say the shahada. That's part of the religion. So just like a person becomes a Muslim in our time by saying the shahada, believing that no one is God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, whoever wanted to believe in Isa, he had to say the shahada too. And he would say that no one is God but Allah and Isa is the messenger of Allah. And like that for all of the prophets. So this Injil that Prophet Isa had, alayhi salatu wasalam, it contained the correct belief in God, that he doesn't resemble the creations, and that Jesus was the slave of Allah and his messenger. And that book also contained religious laws. It had in it the obligation of prayer and fasting. And it had in it the prohibition of eating pig meat and drinking wine and other matters. Allah Ta'ala told us that Prophet Isa, he said, I verify what came before me of the Torah and I legalize for you some of what was made forbidden for you. It means that Jesus came with a new law abrogating the law of the Torah. And among what was in that book, Al-Injil, was the good news of the coming of the prophet of the end of time. That is, our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Allah Ta'ala told us, وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بِنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ And when Jesus, son of Mary, said, O oh, children of Israel, indeed I am the messenger of Allah to you. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَمُبَشِّرًا Verifying what came before me of the Torah. وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولِ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدْ And delivering the glad tidings of a messenger to come after me. His name is Ahmed. That's Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Prophet Isa alayhi salatu was salam, he foretold the coming of Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam, just like all the other prophets did. All of the other prophets foretold the coming of the last prophet and the greatest of the prophets. That was a belief of the prophets and the Muslims who followed them. Just like it's our belief that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last of the prophets and the greatest of the prophets, and that there were prophets before him who had followers, their belief is that there will come the last and the greatest of the prophets, and he will have very great followers. His nation is the greatest of the nations. And Allah Ta'ala honored us by making us from the nation of Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Those prophets told their people about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they described him for them so that if he appears, they would follow him. Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, 
he stood among the children of Israel and he informed them that he is the last of their prophets and that prophethood is cut off from the children of Israel and that there shall come after him the illiterate Arabian prophet who is the seal of the prophets and the best of them absolutely. And Allah wa ta'ala supported Isa alayhi salatu wasalam with many, many miracles. Allah Ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ بِإِذْنِي And when you formed from the clay, O Jesus, a thing like the form of a bird, by my permission, فَتَنْفُخُ فِيهَا فَتَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِي then you blew into it, and it became a bat, by my permission. So what is that talking about here in this ayah? It is that the Jews wanted to challenge Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam. Out of stubbornness though, not so that they would believe. So they thought of the strangest thing they could think of. To challenge him with which was a bat. The reason they chose the bat is because the bat has many strange features. It flies without feathers and it laughs and it's blind except for two times of the day and it gives birth to live babies and it menstruates. That's the toyr that's mentioned in the ayah. So the word toyr, what comes to mind first is the bird. Toyr means in Arabic a flying creature. So a bee is a toyr. So Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he took that clay and he formed it into the shape of a bat. And he blew into it. And he released it and it flew away before their eyes. They saw that and it flew until it disappeared from the people's eyes and then it fell down dead. So that's the saying of Allah. وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِكَ هَيْأَةِ الطَّيْرِ بِإِذْنِي And when you formed out of clay a thing like the form of a bird, by my permission, O Jesus, فَتَنْفُخُ فِيهَا فَتَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِي Then you blew into it and it became a bat by my permission. وَتُبْرِئُ الْأَكْمَهَ وَالْأَبْرَصَ بِإِذْنِي And O oh Jesus, you healed those who were born blind. Not those who went blind, those who were born blind. And the lepers, the people who have leprosy, by my permission. And when you brought forth the dead, by my permission. Those are among the miracles of Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam. And Prophet Isa made the dead come back to life on more than one occasion. The first Revival of the dead that he did was that one day he passed by a woman sitting at a grave crying. And he said to her, what's wrong with you? She said, my daughter died and I did not have any other child. And I, I swore to my Lord that I will not leave this spot of mine until I taste what my daughter has tasted of death or until Allah brings her back to life so that I can see her with my own eyes. So Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, if you saw her, you will leave? She said, yes. So Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he prayed two rakahs. And then he came and he sat at the grave. And he said, 
Yeah, Fulana. Oh, girl, whatever her name was. He called her by her name, Fulana. You know, Fulan in Arabic is like so-and-so or John Doe. And Fulana is like Jane Doe. So he said, Yeah, Fulana. Kumi bi ithni Allahi rahman Fakhruji. He said, Oh, Fulana. Stand by the will of Allah ar-Rahman and come forth. And then the grave moved. And then he called her a second time. And then the grave split by the will of Allah. And then he called her a third time and then she finally came out. And she shook the dirt off of her head. And then Isa said to her, alayhi salatu wasalam, what delayed you from coming to me? She said to him, when the first call came, Allah Ta'ala sent an angel to me and he put me back together. And then when the second call came, Allah brought my soul back to me. And then when the third call came, I was afraid that that was the call for judgment day. And then my hair went white and my eyebrows went white from fear. And then she approached her mother. And she said, Oh, mother, what made you do this? so that I may taste the calamity of death a second time. Oh, my mother, be patient and seek the reward from Allah. I have no need for this dunya. Then she said to Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, ask my Lord to return me back to the afterlife and that he would make easy on me the calamity of death. So Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, Prophet Isa, he made dua to his Lord, and then Allah Ta'ala made her die, and she went back into her grave, and her grave closed back. It went back flat again, by the will of Allah Ta'baraka wa Ta'ala. And when the Jews heard about that, they became increasingly more agitated about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And an example of that is what happened with Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam when he accompanied a man who said to him, Ya Nabi Allah, akunu ma'ak. O oh, Prophet of Allah, I want to go with you. And so they went and they came to the bank of a river. And they sat down and they ate. They had loaves of bread. They ate two and one loaf was left. Then Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he got up and he went to the river and he drank and when he came back, the loaf was gone. So he said to the man, who took the loaf? The man said, I don't know. And so then Prophet Isa went alayhi salatu wasalam and that man was with him. And then Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam he saw a deer that had two fawns. So he called one of those fawns. And then it came to him. And then he slaughtered it. And he cooked it. And he ate from it. And the man who was with him ate from it. And then Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. He said to that deer. Qum bi ifni Get up by the will of Allah. And then it got up. And then he said to the man, I ask you, by the one who made you see this sign, 
Who took the loaf? So the man said, I don't know. And then they went on until they came to some open land. And Isa, alayhi salatu was salam, he took some, some dirt or some soil and he scooped it into a pile. Or maybe it was some sand. And then he said, Kun dhahaban bi'ithnillah. Become gold by the will of Allah. And so it became gold. And then Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he divided that into three parts. And then he said to the man, one third for me, one third for you, and one third for whoever took the loaf. So the man said, I took the loaf. And then Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, you can have all of it. And he left that man. And among what was narrated about Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, and it was reported that a king among the Israelite kings had died. And he was carried to his grave on maybe in a coffin or upon something flat that he's laying on and they're carrying him. So Isa came alayhi salatu wasalam and brought him back to life by the will of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And when the people saw that, they were dumbfounded. When the Jews heard about that, they said he wasn't really dead. He must have been sleep. Maybe he just had heart failure or something. They said if he can really bring the dead back to life, then let him bring back Sam, the son of Noah. So Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, show me his grave. So they took him to his grave. And then Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he hit the grave with his staff. And then Sam, the son of Noah, came forth from his grave. And he pointed at Isa and he said, he is a prophet. Believe in him. And then he went back dead again. And it was said something else about Sam, the son of Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam. It was narrated that one day Prophet Isa was telling his companions about Nuh and the flood and the ark. So... His disciples said, why don't you resurrect for us someone who will testify to that for us? So Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he went to a mound, a mound, like a small hill. And he said, this is the grave of Sam ibn Nuh. And then he made dua to Allah, and Allah Ta'ala made him come back to life. And he came out of his grave and he said, is it judgment day? Isa alayhi salatu wasalam said, no. However, I asked Allah to revive you. And then they asked him, they asked him about the ark and they asked him whatever they asked him and he answered them. And then Allah Ta'ala made him go fall back dead again. And among the miracles of Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam is what happened one day when he had commanded the disciples, Al-Hawariyun, Al-Hawariyun. Those are the ones we're calling the disciples. Those were 12 men who had a special status with Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam among his followers. He had commanded them to fast for 30 days. So they fasted for 30 days, and when they completed that, and they were with him in the open land, and whenever Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam would go out, there would follow him thousands of people. 
some of them would be his companions, and some of them are asking for his dua, and some of them are asking for him to cure them, and some of them are tagging along just to make trouble. His disciples asked him, they said, as Allah told us, إِذْ قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ يَا عِيسَى بِنَ مَرْيَمَ هَلْ يَسْتَطِيعُ رَبُّكَ هَلْ يَسْتَطِيعُ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يُنَزِّلَ عَلَيْنَا مَا إِدَةً مِنَ السَّمَاءِ When the disciples said, O oh, Jesus, son of Mary, will your Lord approve of sending down to us a table spread from the sky? He said, fear Allah. He was afraid for them that they asked for that because he was afraid that they're asking for a sign from Allah would be a reason for them to be destroyed later. Like who? Who can tell us in, let's say, I'll give you 15 seconds. Who asked for a sign from Allah and Allah gave it to them and then he destroyed them? 15. Yes, the tribe of Thamud. Barakallahu fikum. They said to Prophet Salih, bring a camel from the boulder. And then he did that. And in the end, Allah destroyed them. And also the people of Mecca, they used to always ask the Prophet, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Even though they already saw miracles. Even the Pharaoh, if you remember, the Pharaoh said, if only angels came with him or golden bracelets were thrown upon him. That's after he already saw miracles. So Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu was salam, he was afraid for them that they ask for a sign and then Perhaps afterwards they would be destroyed. So they asked him to ask Allah to make a table spread come down from the sky. So that their hearts would be tranquil. And that they would be at peace. Knowing that Allah Ta'ala accepted their fast. And so that that would be an Eid for them. And then they would eat that food on their Eid. And they asked for that to be enough for them. For everyone. For the first person who eats from it down to the last, and for the rich and the poor. And Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he advised them, he preached to them, and he was afraid that they would not appreciate the endowment of Allah as they should. And they had already seen plenty of miracles, so why are they requesting more? But their answer was that they wanted to eat from it to get the blessings. And they insisted. And so he went to where he used to pray. And he was wearing some, uh, a cloak of hair, a cloak made of hair. And he lowered his head and he cried out of the fear of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And he took to begging Allah and beseeching Allah and making dua until... Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala answered his dua. And then a table spread came down from the sky. A cloud above it and a cloud below it. And around it were the angels. And that spread was descending little by little. And every time it drew closer, Isa alayhi salatu was salam, he asked his Lord to make it a mercy and not to make it a punishment. And that he would make it safe and blessed. And it kept coming down closer and closer until finally it settled right in front of Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and it was covered. And so he uncovered it saying, Bismillahi khayrir raziqeen. In the name of Allah, the best of providers. And behold, there was there seven fish, big fish, seven loaves, vinegar, salt, pomegranate, 
honey, fruits, and they found it with a very, very delicious smell. They never encountered something like that. And the news of that reached the Jews, so they came, and they were very disappointed to see that because they want Jesus to fail. And they want his call to dissipate. So Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he commanded his disciples to eat. They said, we won't eat until you eat. He said, who should eat from it is who requested it. And they refused. So when they refused to start, the sick people, the blind people, the crippled people, the poor people, he commanded them to come and there were, there were about 1,300 of them. He told them to eat and they obeyed him. And so they ate from it and the blessings appeared from this great miracle because every single one of them was cured. And whoever was poor became rich. And then the people who refused to eat when they were told to, they regretted that. When they saw the benefit that those who ate got, they regretted that they were not among those who ate. And then when the people crowded around this table spread, Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he started giving them turns. Until every single last person ate. It was said that Every day, 7,000 people ate from it. And then after 40 days, Allah Ta'ala commanded Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, Ya Isa ja'al ma'idati hadihi lil fuqara'i dun al-aghniya. Oh Jesus, make this table spread of mine for the poor, not the rich. So Isa complied with the command. When Prophet Isa specified that table spread for the poor people, that was difficult on the rich people. And he ordered them to not cheat, and to not sneak, and to not take any of it and keep it to take it back. But of course, whoever cheated, cheated. Some of them took some to store it for the next day until the table spread was raised. And then that table spread was raised up to the sky and that was difficult for many of the people. They were disappointed. So when the spread was raised up and so many people were disappointed that now the spread is gone, the table spread, the hypocrites among the people, that means the people who used to pretend to be Muslims, but really they were kuffar. They went amongst the people spreading doubts about Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And so Allah revealed to Isa that he will torture those who blasphemed. So when those who committed kufr woke up the next day, they found themselves transformed into ugly pigs, deformed. There were 33 of them. And they started eating from the garbage after they had been eating nice, delicious food and sleeping on soft beds. And when the people saw that, then they went to Isa crying. And then those pigs came to Isa alayhi salatu wasalam with their heads low. And they were crying. And their tears were flowing. And Isa knew them, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he started saying to them, aren't you so-and-so? And then he would verify with his head without being able to speak. And they stayed like that for several days until Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he made dua and Allah made those people who turned into pigs die. And nobody even knew what happened to them. Did the earth swallow them or what? It's like they disappeared. No one knows what happened to them. And the people, they spoke about this great miracle of Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, and a lot of people believed in him. 
And the believers, they increased in certainty. And Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu was salam, he used to send people out for da'wah. To call people to Islam. And among the stories about that is what's mentioned in Surah Yasin. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says, وَاضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابَ الْقَرْيَةِ إِذْ جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ And give them an example, O Muhammad. Tell them the story about the inhabitants of the town of Antakya when the messengers of Jesus came to them. Al-Mursalun in this ayah is the messengers of Jesus. According to a tafsir, إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ اثْنَيْنِ فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا When Allah commanded Jesus to dispatch two walis. Their names were Sadiq and Saduq. But the people belied them. Those two, Sadiq and Saduq, they went to the town of Antakya. That's in Turkey. If you don't remember... The Levant, which is the land of Asham, includes Jordan, Palestine, Syria, Lebanon, and a portion of Turkey. So when these two Walis came close to the town, they encountered an old man who was grazing some ghanam, sheep or goats his name is Habib and he was a carpenter so he asked about them and they said to him we are the messengers of Jesus and we call you away from the worship of the Awthan that's the idols and to the worship of Ar-Rahman so he said to them, do you have a sign? They said, we cure the sick. And those who were born blind and the lepers. And this man, Habib, he had a son who was sick. He had been sick for two years. So Sadiq and Saduq, they wiped on his son and he got up healthy. So Habib believed. And then the news of these two men spread. And many people were cured by them. Then they were summoned by the king. And the king said to them, Do we have a god besides our gods? So they said, Yes. Who created you and created your idols is God. He said, let me look into your claim. And then the people chased them and beat them up. And it was said that they imprisoned them. So then Allah supported them with a third. Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu was salam, he dispatched a third one. Whose name is Shamroon. That means Simeon, or possibly Simon. Let's say Simeon. So he entered in among them, but discreetly. And he got to know those who know the king, until they were comfortable with him. And then they introduced him to the king. And then the king got comfortable with him. So he said to the king one day, it reached me that you have imprisoned two men have you heard what it is they have to say so the king said no so he called them so they were brought and then Simeon said to them who sent you they said we are sent by Jesus son of Mary the messenger of Allah and Allah is the one who created everything. And he is the one who provided every living thing with its sustenance. He has no partner. 
So Simeon said to them, describe him. That means say his attributes, but be brief. So they said, he does what he wills, and he judges as he wills. He said to them, do you have a sign? They said, whatever the king wishes. So the king had a young man who was born blind brought forth. And then they made dua. Then Allah made that young man able to see. So Simeon said, do you think that your gods can do something like that? So the king said, it's no secret that our gods don't hear anything and they don't see and they don't harm and they don't benefit. So the king said, if your God is able to revive the dead, then we shall believe. So they brought a young man who had died a week prior. He had already been dead for seven days. So by the will of Allah Ta'ala, he came back to life and he said, Indeed, I had been committed to seven valleys of fire because of my dying upon polytheism. And I warn you from what religion you are practicing, believe. And he said, the gates of the sky were opened and I saw a young man with a beautiful face interceding for those three. So the king said, who? So that man who had come back to life said, Simeon and those two. So then the king was surprised. All of them said, those three men, they said, indeed, surely, we have been sent to you. And when Simeon saw that what that young man said had affected the king, he advised the king, he talked to him, and that man, that king, he embraced Islam. And some of the people embraced Islam, but not all of them. Those who did not embrace Islam, قَالُوا مَا أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُنَا They said, you are not but humans like us. وَمَا أَنزَلَ الرَّحْمَنُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And Ar-Rahman did not reveal anything. إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا تَكْذِبُونَ You are nothing but liars. قَالُوا رَبُّنَا يَعْلَمُ إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ لَمُرْسَلُونَ They said, our Lord, he knows that surely we are indeed messengers. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ And there is nothing upon us, nothing is obligatory on us, but clear delivery of the message. قَالُوا إِنَّا تَطَيَّرْنَا بِكُمْ They said, surely, we take you as a bad omen. You guys, you are bad luck. You come with misfortune. But they only took them as a misfortune because they didn't like their religion. Because the norm of ignorant people is that whenever there's something that they're inclined towards, they think that there's good fortune in that. And whenever there's something that they are not inclined towards, they think that there's bad fortune in that. But people who have knowledge, they know better than that. Allah told us in Surah Al-Baqarah, the ayah, which means that there's bound to be something that you like while it's bad for you. And there's bound to be something that you dislike while it's good for you. Those people said, if you don't quit, we will certainly stone you 
and there will surely touch you from us a painful torture, for we will burn you alive. قَالُوا طَائِرُكُمْ مَعَكُمْ So the messengers responded. They said, your superstition has only determined us to be a bad omen because that is what complies with your religion, not because it's true. Is it that when you are presented with clear knowledge that you take it as a bad omen? The fact is that you are transgressing people. And then when Habib, the carpenter, heard the news of what was going on in the town, he was in a cave worshipping Allah. Allah says, وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى and from the extent of the city came a man hurrying. And he saw the messengers. He said to them, Are you asking for any money? For what you have come with? So when they said, No, we're not asking for any money. Habib said to his people, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ He said, Oh my people, follow the messengers. Follow those who do not ask you for any salary, and they are guided. So they said to him, what? Are you on their religion? So he said, and why would I not worship the one who created me? And to be judged by him, you shall all return to life. Would I take gods other than him? He said, if Ar-Rahman willed a calamity for me, the intercession of those idols will avail me not. They will not save me in any way, and they can never intercede for me. <inaudible> Indeed, I would be, if I were to do that, in clear misguidance. Yes, indeed, I have surely only worshipped your Lord. I believe in Allah, your Lord. So listen to my advice. But they killed him. And then it was said, while he was in his grave, Enter paradise. قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ He said, if only my people knew. بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ About my Lord's forgiveness of me and his making me among the honored. وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ جُنْدٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ And Allah did not send against his people after killing him an army from the sky. Allah did not send down upon them an army from the sky. وَمَا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِينَ and that is not the torture that Allah would have inflicted upon them. Indeed, it was but a single scream from the sky, and behold, they were extinguished. 
the angel Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he came down and he screamed at them. A single scream and they all died. So, Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he divided that gold into three. He said, a third for me, a third for you, and a third for whoever took the loaf. So the man said, I took the loaf. So Prophet Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, you can have it all. And then he left that man. And then two men encountered this man. They wanted to kill him and take his gold. So he said to them, let's spread it, let's split it three ways. So they accepted that. And he said to them, someone has to go to town and buy some food for us. So one of them went to go and buy some food. And that one who went to go buy food, he said to himself, why should I split this money with them? I'll poison this food and kill them and take all of the money for myself. So he poisoned the food. And those two men, they said to each other, why should we share the money with him? When he comes back, let's just kill him and we'll split the money in half. So when he came back, they killed him. And then they ate the food and they died of poisoning. And at one time, Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, he passed by them and there they were. Three dead men and a pile of gold. Then he said to his companions, هَذِهِ dunya فَحْذَرُوهَا He said to them, that is the reality of the dunya, so beware. 